Programming is hard. Programmers are the heroes of our time, toiling long hours at the code face to construct the products we all rely upon in our daily lives. The job of a programmer is to write code. Code is expressed in a programming language, commonly C, C++, or Java. When the problem in hand fits the capabilities of the language, this is often straightforward. But when the problem doesn't fit the language, things get less pleasant. Such code tends to be much more long-winded, difficult to understand, and often buggy. Nearly all commonly used languages are procedural. This makes them really good at expressing processes where everything happens in a very specific, well-understood order. Unfortunately, however, this paradigm tends to break down when code has to deal with the need to do more than one thing at a time. Moore's Law has given us faster and faster processors capable of running procedural code ever quicker with each new generation. Unfortunately, however, physics is getting in the way of making individual processor cores faster. Consequently, the only practical way to move forward is to run multiple processor cores in parallel. We now live in a world where even our cell phones have multiple processor cores. Today's most commonly used programming languages simply weren't designed to deal with such parallelism. All too often, programmers must manage today's highly concurrent workloads with languages designed for serial applications. Programmers face a second difficulty. It has long been a purported advantage of modern programming languages that code reuse is possible. That is, it should be possible to create software components that can be slotted together later to make new applications without having to rewrite everything from scratch. Unfortunately, however, in practice this rarely works well, with a lot of messy glue code being necessary to join everything together. In the 1990s, a small Norwegian company, Trolltech, invented an extension to the C++ language that introduced the concept of signals and slots. Their product, Qt, was a graphical user interface library, now owned by Nokia, that built on their signals and slots technology to greatly simplify implementing user interfaces in C++. Signals and slots made it possible to connect objects together that weren't designed to work together. Because a signal slot connection only needs to match types on the connection itself, not on the whole object, very little glue code is needed. Unfortunately for our programmer, though signals and slots make huge inroads to the problem of code reuse, they don't help with concurrency. There is already a well-known paradigm that works well for concurrency. Electronic circuits are by their nature concurrent. All their parts typically are all working at once, not one at a time. The digital electronics paradigm is centered on data flow rather than control flow. In practice, doing control flow with digital electronics tends to be difficult, often requiring tricky workarounds. Signals and slots make it much easier to express data flow in C++, but Qt concentrated mainly on single-threaded code. Tubes are a generalization of signals and slots that extends the concept to encompass concurrency. Tubes extend the C++ concept of classes to include inputs and outputs, analogous to the pins on a chip. Adding inputs is easy. Declare the class as an endpoint. Inputs are just ordinary member functions. You can have as many of them as you like. If you name one input, it becomes the default input for the class. Outputs are declared by adding tubes. As with inputs, you can have as many outputs as you like, but the default output is always called output. So how do we use our squarer class? It's actually pretty simple. First, we're going to want to see what's coming out of it. All we need to do now is wire everything up. Tubes are compatible with the standard template library. 
they are function objects that work with many of the STL algorithms. Here we've replaced the loop with some code that puts some numbers into an STL set. Sending those numbers down a tube just takes one line of code. We are able to use the existing STL for each function. And that's it! It's really that simple. It is fair to mention that some of what we've seen so far could have been done with signals and slots, though our syntax may arguably be a bit nicer. But signals and slots are actually a special case with respect to tubes. Tubes handle the single-threaded case just fine, but extend this to also support the most common kinds of concurrency. Let's say our processing task is a bit tougher than squaring a number. Say, something like calculating a Mandelbrot set. Generating images of the Mandelbrot set is computationally expensive and also tricky to tune for performance well because execution time varies widely and unpredictably. A common approach is to split the image up and allocate each part to separate threads. When execution time is unpredictable, it can be difficult to load balance multiple threads of execution which makes it harder to exploit all available processor power. Normally, writing the code for this kind of thing can be pretty tricky. Tubes has some tools that make this much easier. We've already seen tubes used for single-threaded code. This will work fine, but it will only use one processor core. But if we change one line of code, the spawn tube rather than sending messages in the current thread, spawns a new thread for each message. The destination then receives those messages in parallel. So with a single line change, we have gone from a single threaded implementation to a multi-threaded alternative. This works well, but most operating systems don't respond well to having code spawn thousands of concurrent threads. Tubes has a second option that covers this case. A queue is so called because it behaves like a queue. Messages can be sent to it immediately without blocking. They are queued, and a pool of threads send them on in the background. By default, a queue tube creates a thread pool with the same number of threads as the machine has cores. Thread pools typically provide the best performance for most parallelizable problems because they avoid swamping the operating system with too many threads, but still allow all cores to be fully utilized. Traditionally, implementing thread pools has been very tricky to get right, but as this example shows, tubes makes this near trivial. Another common issue in concurrent programs is synchronizing access to resources that are being used concurrently by many threads at once. Tubes makes this very easy. Let's say that we wanted our Mandelbrot generator class to log progress information as it proceeds. Let's implement a class that logs output to the console while enforcing strict synchronization. That is, only one log message may be sent at a time even though many threads may attempt to do so at once. By specifying that the class is a synchronous endpoint, Tubes automatically synchronizes all incoming messages with a mutex, so we just wire it up, and we're done. So to sum up, Tubes builds on the code reuse advantages of signals and slots while also providing very powerful concurrency constructs that are easy to use and fully standard template library compliant. The prototype implementation supports all major operating systems. I have bullet points. <laughs>